challenges about some of the maybe some of the positive ways too that it informed your art? Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, the Olympic Peninsula in Washington is really, really beautiful um, land out there. So we were very much uh, just kind of up in it, which is really cool. So a lot of opportunities to just get out and look at stuff. And um, a lot of you know, places to paint, you know, painting pretty much outside. You know, I take stuff into the into our house and work on it some at night, but it's not a great deal unless we just kind of like on location out there. Uh, challenges, I don't know, it was fine. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> I got a solar panel and a little battery, and it was really good. Um, for inside or for outside? For inside. Okay. Uh, there was like several small buildings that we could keep living in them. Tony and I lived in one of them, and I had my own little solar panel that I set up, and so we had lights and power. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had a wood stove. And, and uh, when you took the paintings, you took them to the just like physically carried them out and back. And yeah, yeah, for the most part. And did you, do you feel that that is a different experience as a painter to be painting outside in front of nature or in front of the building as opposed to painting inside the studio? Yeah. Or could you talk about that a little yeah. bit? Yeah, I mean, since coming to Chicago, I finally uh, got a big space to work that was where that was. And it's been really different. It's been um, a really big, um, a lot more kind of working over stuff, a lot more kind of bigger stuff. It's kind of like the whole challenge is like just getting kind of lost in it and like not, you know, like, oh, I kind of went too far or just kind of struggling against the whole thing, which is great. It's like what I wanted it for, but it's like a different challenge. I mean, a lot of these really, they went pretty fast. You know, you kind of get out there, you get a good sketch of it, maybe come back and rework some things, change some things. But that's kind of the one that you kind of have like an end. Mm -hmm. That's pretty clear. And, um, and that's harder to define when you're inside? I feel like, yeah, making like bigger stuff that is a lot more layered and a lot more um, just kind of different work that like, gives a lot more like, rework. Mm -hmm. But uh, honestly, I feel like I'm actually making maybe almost as much for me as I was before of the ones that, you know, kind of this size on paper. And it's almost like just the bigger stuff is just another, a whole other thing that's happening too. It's almost like kind of getting the eye of the doing these ones is like bringing them up and having them keep them going there to start, you know? Mm -hmm. The next step is just to get almost the focus away from the stuff that was originally kind of like the hard to Um, There's a, a, an essayist uh, that I really like who writes about art and politics, the late John Berger. And I was recently reading an essay by John Berger where he compares a painting to a tree and then speaks about how all the roots are in fact the process that we don't see, uh, the struggles, the idea, everything that it perhaps takes place in time as opposed to the painting being a moment that's present in front of you. I'm wondering if you could talk to us a little bit more, you certainly addressed it in the video, about your artistic process, maybe the difference between the process outside and inside, and how you uh, generate ideas and, um... I feel like especially with a lot of these ones that are here, uh, I think you know, like the process is like, supposed to seem at least like apparent, you know, just kind of laid out. You can kind of feel like you would know what it was, you know, the experience imagined of like doing it yourself or something like that, I think is like, even if it's not all 100% honest always, I think that's what like... What do you mean by that? I feel like sometimes, like, it's okay to, to like, take that experience. Take what experience? The, ex like, the, the, like, directness of the painting. Uh -huh. So, like, like, you know, like, I want it to, to feel like it just all kind of happened mm -hmm. in one thing, even if, in actuality, maybe it was less direct than that. Mm -hmm. uh, like this one, like that one in the corner, uh, we were camping and I went out late at night and said, like, is everybody ever camped by? And I kind of painted late into the night. And in the morning, it was just a big black blob. <laughs> it didn't like anything at all. And I didn't really think that was ever going to turn into anything. And then later, 
when I was working over it through other stuff, I started kind of working along on it and going along with it. And it is really developed into something that I think became really nice. Um, and that's kind of what I mean. Like, I want it to feel like, you know, it's like that experience of it all kind of like coming together. But that's not entirely like really how that happened. Like, the experience of being out there and painting it was really cool, but it like really didn't make much of anything. It was just kind of a mm -hmm. black piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then, so, you know, like that, the moon or whatever, that was there, so that's just paper, and I don't know that is one that's kind of coming out. Mm -hmm. Cool. I know we talked about this a little bit before the conversation about how the, I love the title of this exhibit, mm -hmm. and how the title actually came about in kind of a uh, almost haphazard way, but I still think it's worth looking at the title and discussing it maybe with everybody because I, the, you know, for me, a field, well, for all of us, a field guide, of course, is what we take when we go somewhere or we want to consult it at home to learn the specificities of nature. And um, North America, uh, you know, obviously the, this painting is grounded in, um, in the experience that you had in, in Washington. So I'm just thinking uh, that it would be fun to discuss that a little bit, this idea that uh, maybe the paintings could be our field guide. Um, and, you know, this notion of happiness is so uh, profound and yet could be so cliche, you know, in a way. I'm just trying to get, what are your thoughts about the title? Um, I, think it, I think the title is great. I really <laughs> scratched my head about it for a long time. Uh, Emily helped a lot with figuring that out. Um, Cause I don't like I don't really like I don't really title the pieces. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like I'm not I'm I, you know I really am not trying to exist in that kind of verbal realm mm -hmm. at all, mm -hmm. or really even I feel like almost the less that you like I don't even really want to be thinking about what I'm doing at all when I'm making these paintings. I like feel like as close and like clearly as you can look at the thing without like, paying as little attention or something. It's like mm -hmm. almost more of where I want to be at. But yeah, I think the title is, is really great. Kind of was an adaptation of a video title. Oh yeah? Which one? Um, the video is called An Odorless Field Guide to <laughs> North American Happiness, which was just me taking pictures of things that were on my desk, mm -hmm. like a field guide and a thing of paint thinner and cut and pasting with words to it. But, um, but yeah, I think it I think it describes the show really well. Mm -hmm. I guess I think happiness in this sort of context for me more means like um, just you know the quality of like of experience or just being alive. Mm -hmm. You know, I feel happiness is a good word for it, but it doesn't really it kind of has some other connotations. I think maybe just like you know. Field guide to you know these experiences or how they're how they're you know, interpreted through, right. through the medium. Of Sounds like you must have had a real sense of plenitude out in nature for three years. Yeah, so oh, yeah. I'm just wondering if that might be even linked also to to this. And I think that as viewers, when we when we go through the exhibit, we do have that feeling of plenitude and transcendence that you've been able to. To give to us through the through the paintings. Yeah, I mean, I think that's I think that's the idea with life, I guess. And you know, maybe this is one way to like talk about ways into into that, you know, into into experiencing and thinking about ex you know life and just appreciating being alive. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, what struck me the first time that I saw the exhibit were these the examples of representational art, mostly, but a couple really fantastic abstract pieces. I'm wondering if you could talk about what those words mean to you and how you see your art, maybe not necessarily fitting into one category or the other, but what appeals to you in both of those. I feel like, with the exception of maybe this circle world here, um, I really do not think of them as abstract at all. Mm -hmm. I feel like, like, even if it's just completely just a bunch of weird blobs, 
a year, I probably was sitting looking at something, even if I was largely ignoring it at the end of the day. Um, and like that being a painting of whatever it is, is like kind of, I mean, it's not important to, I don't really care what someone takes or doesn't take from that. But to me, it's like definitely a, a picture of a thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, I don't know, I think that's more freeing than abstract. I mean, I think just ab something that's just totally abstract is, for me anyways, I found it, it was, it was boxing me in too much. To think about that as a goal when you sit down to paint something. Yeah, and it's just like, it's not like, to me it was more free just to like, you know, just make a connect, look at something, like respond to that, however, or ignore it or whatever, but like, I'm not deciding what's happening. I'm just kind of like the vessel for these things to move through. And like, that's like a cooler way to get to like the brush work and all of those sort of stuff that I was doing when I was doing the abstract painting. Mm. Oh, without. so you were, you used to do that? Yeah, abstract. like, yeah, yeah. In college, I did a bunch of abstract painting. Um, but I just felt, yeah, I just like it kind of was a dead end. I think that like it, it was more direct just to work from life than to try to like make paintings about themselves. Like, it's already about painting. Not any more open to get rid of that part of it or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that mm -hmm. makes sense or not, but. I think it did. <laughs> <laughs> I think meaning that um, if you're doing abstract art in your mind, you're really focusing on the interior, whereas when you're opening up to the outside world, you don't have to focus on that interior because. Well, and also the, the painting part is happening either way. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like this idea that abstract is more about painting because you're not looking at anything. It's like you, you're doing the thing. You're right. just like, you know, like I, I felt like I was just stuck in 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 nothing instead of just being mm -hmm. like, and then look at just you know, mm -hmm. you start with that. It doesn't. You don't have to make it look like that. It's just like a way to to get far enough along that you can start making decisions and like feeling things out mm -hmm. and like, going from there. Today. I'm wondering, um, because this does, is the, the exact, the, the actual exhibit is rooted in North America, if there are any other North American landscape artists that have inspired you? Sure. Um, yeah. I mean, like Charles Birchfield, huge, huge fan of his stuff. I feel like I was already making work a lot like this when I discovered him and I was just like, oh wow, like I get I get what's up with this. Uh, like uh, Walter Anderson, uh, kind of very similar uh, artist. Uh, he was he was really cool. Uh, he had a museum down in Ocean Springs. I don't know. It was, it was near uh, New Orleans when I was living down there. Mm -hmm. So I went there a couple times. That's really neat. Um, uh, who else? I don't know. I got some some motif period, like late period pictures mm -hmm. on my desk right now that I've been looking at a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, like those are like dunes and things mm -hmm. like that. They're so beautiful. Which also have a tendency to mix or play around with this idea of abstract and yeah. representational. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And um, who else have I been really like? This guy, I was in Mexico City and Manuel uh, Serrano, and he was seems like he's mostly like a was it like a surrealist, but he does a bunch of pictures there that I really really liked, and they were just kind of still lifes, and there was nothing really in particular that was weird about them until you start looking at it, mm -hmm. and then they were just incredibly surreal and incredibly mm -hmm. bizarre. There's one um, of like a rib cage on a beach. Um, what I what I found on the beach that <laughs> located in Ponte uh, in La Playa, and um, it's just so good. It's so it's just like a terrifying world, but mm -hmm. it's just a picture of the thing, you know. And like like I think that kind of I'm really interested in that sort of stuff. Like I feel like if you can get people in the door, seeing something and knowing what it is. And like feeling like, oh, that's a picture of the road, that's a picture of some trees, that's whatever. You've established some sort of um, idea of what's going on. There's a sense of normalcy. And then you have a place to, to push against, 
and like do something bizarre and exciting. And I think when everything is just already crazy craziness the whole time, it's not there's nothing to, to make you feel weird about that. We're pretty pretty used to bizarre images mm -hmm. in our world all the time. And without like sort of creating somewhere to be that you understand, it's hard to actually do anything that is bizarre or like kind of transformative. I feel like. mm -hmm. Yeah, you were talking about that moment in front of the painting. Is that at the Mexican? Yeah, it's in the it's in the um like Mexican City mm -hmm. in, the, in the in Mexico City, yeah. And what I liked was this idea of you looking at it and not turning away but looking at it for a prolonged time and then you having this experience with the painting and coming coming to different uh, interpretations and identities, feelings, for lack of a better word, with the painting. And it reminds me of how you so um, you so nicely describe what you believe the role of the viewer is in the document that Emily has. Um, I know that when when I sometimes watch, I like to sometimes watch people in art museums looking at stuff, and you notice that the average time that you look at a painting in a museum is often like under a minute, you know? And so I'm just wondering if you want to talk a little bit to us about how you feel the role of the viewer is in your, in your painting and how that dialogue is established. Um. What do you expect of this, Francis? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, they're made to be to be looked at, you know. And I guess, um, I guess, you know, it's it, it's off, like having them up in this gallery is an amazing opportunity. But I feel like for most of my life, most of them are not ending up in situations like that. So it's kind of mostly like something that someone hopefully will have and look at for a long time in their house. And I think that I want to I want to be able to make something that. You know, you don't. Everything isn't revealed in the first when you look at the piece. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's got to be something that you can look at for years and kind of different things. You like notice different things at different times, or kind of like there's a room in it for you to kind of put yourself into it mm -hmm. and it kind of responds to what you're going through too. Which isn't to say it's just like an empty thing that doesn't have any sort of thing it's trying to push which which way or another, but like. I feel like if you look at it and get the whole idea in the first five minutes, that's fine. But there's no reason to have that like ongoing relationship with it if it's going to be in your house or something for a long time. Does that answer the question? Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm wondering too because I, when I was um, preparing this, I, I watched all your videos <laughs> and I listened to all your music. And um, I'm wondering how or whether or not, you know, um, you find that those three uh, three categories of work inform each other. Do you, do you listen to music? What is that? Or I think I mean the, I feel like the biggest way that they inform each other for me is just to uh, have other places to put ideas. Mm -hmm. And so I'm not trying to make something that's a painting that should really be something else. I feel like. You know, I'm interested in, in painting, and I'm interested in being painting. I'm not interested in writing a, a book about it. You know, mm -hmm. I'd love to write a book about something, but it's not. If I'm going to try to do that, I'm going to start by doing that. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like like art where you have to really read a whole bunch of. You know, it's really interesting to read. You know, the, what's written about stuff. But if you need that to like understand what it is or get in the door, I feel like sometimes it would have been a better essay. You know, like I don't you like I want it to, to be a painting about that experience of looking at pain. And I was kind of going into a different direction actually, so I probably didn't phrase the question well enough. I'm wondering if music sometimes enters into the painting, if it helps you with the painting, if there's ever a rhythmic exchange between the music that you compose and the 
process of, of painting, or those not, are kind of two separate things? Not notably. Mm -hmm. um, I'll work on, I'll listen to music, I'm working on stuff, or I'll work in silence. Yeah, you know, I like, I can, I can go and be there all day long after I listen to music. And I love to listen to music, but mm -hmm. yeah, I would say not particularly. How do you see, being in Chicago now, how do you see that might change your, your art? Oh, kind of immediately. It's, it's all, it's very different. And, um, just from like painting stuff outside the windows or ideas gathered from looking at stuff. Um, I kind of thought I'd get in there and spend a couple of months just kind of rehashing the imagery, you know, like really working on all these kind of mountains and kind of the distance and all this stuff that was going on in Washington. We do get to use as a use the first part of the thing. But kind of immediately, it just all, the imagery just all changed, the stuff that I was interacting with. Mm -hmm. Do you feel drawn to urban landscapes at all? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I've been doing kind of some urban landscapes just as a weird kind of skyline out of the window and a couple kind of weird stuff kind of more like yeah, that where it's sort of more invented, things. but mm -hmm. just like very directly responding to, to things like that. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping to do some more painting outside soon. I just got my one little kit back together, so I've done a couple of those the other day. So um, I want to keep painting outside as well as trying to do the inside stuff. Are there are, are there any questions out there for the audience? I'm kind of curious about the timeline of like of that thing, or if you can talk about like this one or this one. This one. one yeah. Now. No, this one. That is a sunset. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. I guess like was it done after you did? these or like kind of at the end of like where this your stay was, where your stay of painting um of, yeah this was back. after these ones yeah. i feel like these ones were like up, up last year that was like kind of a big moment mm -hmm. whatever that was just kind of the opening up and i think it came really pretty directly out of the ink drawing uh-huh kind of that just like openness and like attitude of just like if you don't feel like doing it just leave it out you know I don't know, just do what feels good. So yeah, this game, this is after that. But I also feel like this is a, a kind of painting, kind of sky like that, that I've been making a lot of for well, kind of a long time. A lot of what? A lot of paintings that are similar to that in, in, in a certain way. Like it certainly is, looks like it was from this time, but kind of like that, kind of just like weird abstract Sky, with the window ground on the bottom, of making paintings like that sort of uh -huh. But it was, was it more like towards the end of your stay? That was very close to the end of the stay mm -hmm. in Washington. Yeah. yeah, I think that was probably maybe a good week before I left. Uh huh. That's kind of interesting. Is that a direction you want to stay in, or is that, I guess, is that kind of a result, or just where you were at? I think that's where or I was what? at. But yeah, I would. Um, I mean, I've made several paintings that I would consider somewhat similar to that here. Okay. Uh, kind of just like looking at the sky around the studio and kind of responding to that. And uh, maybe the last little bit of the bottom is a little different. But I, I think the, the feelings, you know, they're, each, they're all individually different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really love the painting a lot. Yeah. yeah. Is it the one you're gonna buy? <laughs> Maybe, <laughs> but it does feel like it's kind of um, a ladder painting of the piece, so that's why I was curious uh -huh. if that's where uh -huh. you want to kind of stay, or was that was that significant in some way? Yeah, it certainly is the one that I really loved out of this group mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't really. I guess I'm trying to do as much different things as once mm -hmm. as possible and mm -hmm. just see what happens and then, which is kind of one of the amazing things about putting the show together and having some help doing it. I feel like it's not at all the pictures I would have picked out. Mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. And it was really, and I love, and I love how they look together and I love the 
relationships, just like different relationships and things that, that Emily found in things that it's cool to see. I think that's mm -hmm. why editors are really important. <laughs> yeah. Well, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, I mean, it seems to me like you're really interested in a certain kind of weather, and that these all seem to be about an overcast, snow filtering through trees, and they seem to be, you know, very private moments. And um, um, I enjoyed it, briefly, because I don't like sunny weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's too public, everyone's out smiling at each other. I don't want it. So I mean, these are really my kind of uh, moments, and just sort of, they seem uh, sort of a quiet enjoyment of a certain time of day, certain, um, Lands or a certain landscape that other people might not be walking through, mm -hmm. particularly appreciating. So mm -hmm. I think it's, it's a very interesting moment that you're you're painting. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. I feel like that mm -hmm. describes my lifestyle pretty much. Wonder mm -hmm. places where other people are not walking around. <laughs> I think kind of like a nuts and bolts question. Like, would you would you kind of scout locations ahead of time? Like, would you be out walking and Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, yeah. Um, sometimes not. But yeah, often I would bring a piece of paper, tape to a board, go out and walk around, and then pick a spot and go back. Mm -hmm. And in the last <laughs> several years, I've actually gotten more. I think more about if it's actually going to be comfortable to sit there. <laughs> so, <laughs> I make better paintings if I'm not like, falling off a cliff. The whole time. Uh, so that's, that's a little. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Is that why you chose Washington? To fall off a cliff? No, <laughs> <laughs> the climate and the, um, every, the weather and the I don't know. I mean, I, I've been living in New Orleans for about four or five years, and I was ready to go somewhere else without any really specific plans. Mm -hmm. And it wound up being Washington. Mm -hmm. And um, I really had no intention of living on the so I visited it a few times, and just the idea that we could do that was like, oh wow, that's such an incredible place to be. We could try to live there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm very, very happy. Because there's a response to the climate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very misty. Yeah. yeah. Can you talk about this large painting a little bit? Because I understand it's done with watercolor. Yeah. And I, I have that. It's like almost hard for me to believe. That's well, I thought. Like, how, many, how many layers and what kind of paper did you use? Um, this one, unlike a lot of the other ones, I really, so really, really did work on for a long time. Mm -hmm. A lot of different versions. I went out to the great of the one of Google, which is the top of the peninsula, you do it looking at it like Vancouver. Um, and like started it, and it might have just done with a pencil and drawing. And then, yeah, I just worked on it little by little for a long time. So, but it's a very nice, thick, absorbent paper. I don't know exactly what kind. Mm -hmm. Somebody gave it to me, I don't really remember why in the world he had it. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like uh, how much everything just really absorbs into it. And mm -hmm. it's like even really it's a texture you don't see very often in watercolor. Because I can almost feel the rockiness and the and the wetness of the of the water. It's really it's really quite beautiful. And this one too, actually I painted a lot in small chunks ah. with the primer. I love the primer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel like it's really freeing. I feel like if you however long it is, it's five minutes, three minutes, it's just like ah. Like, okay, you got three minutes, and you just you, like, there's not that you don't have to wonder if it's time to stop. Right. You know it's a short period of time. You just kind of like interesting. Do you always do that? I don't always, but I have been lately. Wow. I really, really like it. A tip for procrastinating. Yes. Yeah, it's just, it's just I'm always like, like frozen in front of the creative moment, and then you can just say just ten minutes. Yeah, it's nothing. You know, you know how long that is, and you kind of just suddenly work the whole period of time, and then when it's done, it's done. And if you want to do another five or ten minutes, you just have to clock it in. I feel like it really is, an, it's like not limiting at all. Right, it's right. It's really, really freeing. But yeah, I did this, a lot of it in little chunks with the timer. Okay. Moving around and then we would pull back and kind of try to bring cool. it all back together again. Um, 
Not with a metronome, which would make one lose one's mind. Right? Yeah, maybe that was a little Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel the time frees you up? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Any other questions or comments? I really, I encourage if you haven't been here already to go around to the site too because there, I love those uh, gesture kind of paintings that you made. They were really fantastic. So thanks for coming, Emily. Anything you want to say?